something that really bears repeating, I think. I think it bears repeating because there's a, there's a price that we, have to, that we have to pay. There's a price that we have to pay. There's uh, something that God is expecting from us. Um, there's something that God is expecting from us, and, um, and we have to do it. Now, one of the things I think that, and I'll, I'll kind of preface what we're going to talk by just uh, what we're going to talk about by just saying this: that I think that one of the one of the things that we have to begin to entertain is um, we have to begin to uh, entertain the possibility of the depth of ministry that God has actually called us to. What is the assignment? What is the ministry? What is the, um, what is the call that's upon your life? And so as we begin to identify uh, those things, we want to make sure that we understand that there's going to be a, there's going to be a challenge that is going to be, uh, that is going to be posed to us that is uh, going to be measured by the assignment that we have, the call uh, that we have. Uh, uh, and so if we can identify that, we can identify the depth of, uh, of the challenge that we, would be, that we would be faced with. Are you with me so far? Um, so let's dig in here and really begin to uh, begin to identify uh, some things about the call that's upon our lives. Um, the you know because I, I think that this is a major major uh, thing that we um, I think this is a major thing that we um, possibly you guys come on up if you will. Um, I think this is a major thing that um, that that we have to begin to uh, we have to begin to entertain um, because I, I think it's one of the I think it's one of the things that we oftentimes we just simply don't really think about we don't really think about it and so therefore we actively. Uh, Or no, the depth of your call. How many of you really feel like you, you feel like you know you you care to uh, expound? That's the end, Elder Ruth. Oh, <laughs> you say not even the slightest. You didn't even think about raising your hand, did you? <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, go ahead, Ramona. You care to you care to expound? Okay. You hear me? I haven't started talking yet. <laughs> All right. The, um... Wow. Okay, I'll tell you what. Let's start, let's, let's start right here. Let, let's start right here. What has God said? And I think we can, now we can get everybody to participate, right? What has God said to you specifically? Yeah, I mean, that makes it easier now, right? That doesn't make it easier? What has God said to you? At any, at any given point in your, in your world, what has God spoken to you specifically about your call? Or your assignment? Whichever one. 
Give me one thing that he says specifically about your call. See, because now what we're trying to do, we're trying to measure, we're trying to measure the depth of the challenge. Okay, go ahead. One thing is, he said, I have blessed you to be a blessing. Okay. To families. Okay. And nations. Families and, and nations. Okay. Okay. So we so we'll start right there. Uh, anybody else? So family and nations. Family. <laughs> Yes. You, oh, wait a minute. Gwen, you were going to say something? God said to me that he was removing the caution from my life. Okay. Now, now I, what we need to know is what he said for you to do. In part. Okay. Because now there's going to be a lot of things that he's, that he's going to tell us to move. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of things he's going to tell us to move throughout the process. But there's something that he told you very specifically that he wants you to do. You know, and remember, just because he said to do it, uh, uh, just, just because he said to do it don't mean it's going to, you know, you're going to do it right now. <laughs> It is certainly good to have Mr. and Mrs. Burke with us. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, God has never told me specifically what I was, but he did tell me what I was not. Any sense? What did he tell you to do? Um, Anything? Me, uh, what he, he told me, uh, I was, and I heard it very clearly. I was driving down the road, and mm -hmm. I was going... I was going through my first topics, mm -hmm. and he said, "You need to stop calling yourself a pastor." Mm -hmm. I mean, he just kept asking me questions. He said, uh, "Look at this. You know, look at what you listen to. Look at the kind of music you listen to. Look at the things. What are the things that you ponder, think about, and dominate your mind?" I had to think about that. I think it related to a pastor. Mm -hmm. that Okay, that makes sense. But as I looked at it, it was very clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes good sense. Particularly at that at that place where he's he wants to challenge you to hear. He wants us to pay attention. You know, those are some of the things that God would do. You know, he don't always just come right out and tell you. I'll try that one more time. He don't just always just come right out and tell you. Why? Because he, he wants to pull us into a place of revelation. <laughs> Does that make sense? He want to pull us into a place of revelation. You care to share, Deb? I'm sorry about my poor English, but I will try. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> um, God said to me before, <laughs> Mary Kelly, um, Merit, um, God, God wants to, to, to show me more things, you know, revelations, and He called me, um, to come close to Him, like prayer more. And worship him. He said, no matter what I have to my life, I have to worship him. Because sometimes mm -hmm. I just stop. I just stop. And, and yeah. Okay. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. So let's jump in. So now let's, let's think about that. Okay, so we have family. We have uh, the nation. 
we have the prophetic, and we have that place by him. That's, a, that's very interesting because that's one of the things God spoke to me a long time ago. He said, God, God said that. He, he said the same thing to me that he said to Moses. There is a place by me. And that's all he would just, that's all he would say to me. There's a place by me. And, um, and so he, he let me know that that's where he called me. He's, and, and now and then that kind, of, that kind of encouraged me to find out where he said that in the word. And he said it to Moses. And, uh, and he said to Moses that I will hide you in the cleft of the rock. I'll hide you in the cleft of the rock. And, um, and that's a place to be called. That's a called place. It's the place that God will, uh, that God will call you. And, and remember, when God have called you to that place, it, it demands a life of worship. It demands that. And so, so we have the so we have the family, uh, we have the uh, we have the family, we have the nation, we have the prophetic, we have, uh, and we have the place by Him. Now, all of those all of those areas requires a whole different dimension of a challenge. Because now, just think about this: if you're going to speak to the family, then what is it that you think that, what is one of the areas that you think that you're going to be tried? Family. But let's take that a little deeper. Let's try relationships. Relationships. And so now watch this now. And so one of the things that um, one of the things that Jesus said in giving us an understanding about a friend, he said that a friend is one that what? Sticks what? Sticks how? Okay, sticks how? Closer than a brother. Sticks closer. Closer than a brother. So the indication is that a brother really does stick close. Brothers stick close to one another. But, but in, in, his, uh, in his explanation of a friend, what's going to happen is a friend's going to stick closer than that. But now we want to focus on the relationship part. So, so then what do you think the challenge would be? Always quitting on, relate, on, on people you're in relationship with. You had that challenge because now if a brother, if, if, if family are designed to stick close, then, <laughs> then that would be an area of challenge. So, so the depth of the challenge would be, uh, the depth of the challenge would be in, it would be to, for a person to be challenged at a level of never giving up, not giving up on people. And I can promise you, I can promise you this, that anybody that's called to family, that's one of the first tests you have to pass. Not even the temptation to quit on people. Anyway, okay, well, how about the nation? Along with the nation comes what? Hmm? Okay, people, yeah. Uh, but along with that comes what? Huh? Okay, relationship, yeah. But also with that comes what? Okay, revelation, yeah. But along with that comes what? I mean, I'm looking for that main thing that it comes with. Think nation. 
now, th now go through the concordance of your mind and, and, think about, and think about all of the people that God spoke to about the, a nation and what he gave them. What did he give them? Okay, he gave them land, gave them position. But I'm looking for that main thing. Say it again. That is absolutely right. He gave them authority. He gave them authority. And so now, so now think about this now. And so that is not, so, so now, now let me go through this and I know this is over in the Renaissance prophet, but but let me let me go through this. So you have so you have local authority, you have regional authority, you have national authority, and then you have international authority. And so at the very at the very least, when God speaks regarding nations, then that is national authority. It's not, it's not local, <laughs> or we could take that down a little further, right, and say residential. Could be residential, uh, local, regional, national, international. Well, that's the, that's the level of, of authority at the very least. That's the level of authority that's almost at the top. And so what do you think the challenge is going to be to get you to to get you to prove that you can wear that? I, I see I want to get you I want to get you to think because see this is an area I think that we I think that many many people in the body of Christ have failed. I think many people in the body of Christ have failed in this area. Why? Because God is now, he, he's given us a call, he's given us an assignment, but we have never really looked at the assignment and, 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 um, and examined the dimension of a challenge that's going to come with that. Because remember, we have to try that on. And you actually have to wear, you actually have to wear that. Whatever that authority is, whatever that call is whatever that assignment you're going to have to you're going to have to put that on and the only way that you can put that on is if is if you can endure the challenge that goes along with that does that make sense you can go ahead and put amen right there that's good amen you know and so so once again you know think about think about Moses think about Moses think about all the all the things that Moses actually went through well, you know what? Let's not even deal with Moses. I, I want to deal with, I want to deal with somebody we probably rarely deal with, and we probably uh, we probably don't really think about uh, what they probably went through because it's it's really it's really not it's really not largely spoken about, and that would be and that would be about a little heathenistic girl called Ruth. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> no, no, no. Honestly, a, heath a heathenistic girl called Ruth. Now think about this. She's tagging around with Naomi, right? Uh, she's married in the family, and this is something that you have to really get. She's married in the family, but now, but now she goes. She says to Naomi, "I'm not going to leave you." Where you go, I go. Where you die, I die. Your people are going to be my people. Your God, my God. Now, now, think about this now. Now, she goes home to one of the most, I hate to put it this way, but it's true, to one of the most prejudiced groups of people on the planet at that time. She goes home with her. And serves her. Can you imagine the kind of uh, the kind of um, that God was preparing her for something, wasn't he? 
And so can you imagine the kind of pressure that she went, that she went under going into a Jewish land and it's clear where she came from? And so Naomi knew that. So Naomi said, no, you're going back to your people. <laughs> you're going back to your people and to your gods. Go on back. The Lord be with you. And she said, I'm not leaving you. Where you go, I go. Where you die, I die. Your people are going to be my people. Your God, my God. So in other words, she's divorcing herself from everything that was in her world. But think about this. She had to go through something. Case in point, you remember when she went back to, when, when, she, when she laid at the feet of Boaz. You remember that? What, and, and when Boaz realized the message that she was sending, what did Boaz say? Let me help you. There is a nearer kin than I. You go to him. But he, but now watch this now. And, and she does that. But guess what? He don't want her. He don't want her. You know why? Because she's not of his nationality. Don't want her. Can you imagine what that, what that actually felt like? I mean, that, that was a huge dose of rejection. Now, all of the other people that were surrounding, can you imagine how she was treated? They didn't just welcome her. They heard the story about how good she was to Naomi. But they didn't just welcome her. Now, now understand this, and this is, what I want you, this is what I want you to get out of this. All of this was a test because of what she was called to do. All of this was a test. And so now understand this now. So God is going to walk her in, into the blessing. Uh, God's going to walk her into the blessing, but she has to go through the test first. Can she endure all of that and still be good to her mother-in-law and, and still not quit? See, all of this before she could really have Boaz. Are, are you here? And so now think about this. Now think about the, all, think about the fact that God called you. You were called from your mother's womb. And God called you. He he foreordained you. But now, and then think about all the things that you have gone through. Understand this, and this is what I want you to get. All of it was a test. All of this is preparation. So that you could step into that call. Now understand this. Now, so there's a, so there is a there, there is a uh, uh, the oil's cost and challenge. So there's a cost and a challenge that goes along with the oil or the anointing that comes on you. Because now remember, when you have a call and you have an assignment, there is an anointing that accompanies that. You have to put that anointing on like a coat. Does that make sense to you? Now, here's, here's the question that you have to ask yourself. You have to ask yourself, have I effectively endured the endured the cost and endured the challenge for the anointing that I must put on and the anointing is is what is going to accompany that call and that assignment God doesn't send you out with an assignment without anointing you and and you never put on the anointing you never put on the anointing Without, uh, without there being a call or, or an assignment. So what is that? What is that thing that God has called you to do? What is that thing? He's called you to do something. And when he, when he measured the depth of that call, he gave you an anointing to accompany that, but only after you've endured the test. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so let's let's dig in here. <laughs> Glory to God. Here's 
here's one of the things that I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty sure of. I'm pretty sure that once you have um I'm pretty sure that once you have identified the fact that there is a there is a tremendous call of God on your life. I am pretty sure that once you've identified that, you've also identified the fact that you have been going through something. You know, if you just think, if you just think back on, on the making, if you just thought back on just on the making, I could promise you that you you look back now, you 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 can just about pick out the things that were part of your being made so that you can wear the anointing. And understand this, you have to be able to put the anointing on like a coat. And as I shared with them on last night, you, you, have, to, you have to be able to flow with the anointing. That's, that's part of the making. That, well, I, let me put it this way. That's part of the reason that you've gone through what you've gone through or what you're going through in order to in order to be so in tune with the anointing that you have to flow with and and what we do what we do in the prophetic it requires us to really flow with God to really flow in that anointing it requires that does that make sense okay so let's let's look into this just a bit any questions before we jump into this? Okay. Okay. Okay, so now let, let's go. Let's go, Carla. Let's read it a little right at the beginning. The oil's cost and challenges. The costs and challenges working in us as prophets and prophetic people will bring about great benefits. However, we must also accept that the process frequently involves two, type, two types of pain. What do we mean by two types of pain? I have a quote I say from time to time. Until the pain of staying the same becomes greater than the pain to change, you won't, author unknown. Now, so let's think about that. Let's think about that for a moment. Until the pain of staying the same becomes greater than the pain to change, you won't. So one of the things that is, that is understood, and that is that we cannot do what we're called to do like we was or like we are. So if, if we're just getting started in this, there's no way that we can stay like this and, and still do the call. It, you can't do it. You have to, you have to be able to, um, to accept the cost and the challenge in order, to, in order to flow like God wants you to flow. Does that make sense? You know, so so there, so there's a challenge. There's a challenge at hand. There's a cost here. Um, now that means that we have to change, and so um, so until the pain of staying the same becomes greater than pain to change, we won't. And so so in other words, there's a, there's a pain associated with staying just like we are, but then there's a, there's also a pain associated with us changing, and so. Um, so until the pain of what? Staying the same becomes what? Okay, so the, the, so the, the, the pain associated with staying just like this must become greater than the pain to change. Does that make sense to you? It, it must become greater because unless, unless we get to the point where we are, where, where it, it's hurting us so bad to stay like this. Unless we get to that point, we'll never, we'll never accept the pain that's associated with changing. And every last one of us, uh, if we're going to go to that next dimension in God, if we're going to encounter what God really wants for us, it means that we're going to have to change. It means that we're going to have to change. I was, um, you know, years ago, uh, I was listening to I was listening to Norval Hayes, who actually just passed. Um, I was listening to Norval Hayes, and he was and he was to, and he was saying, and I could identify so much with his story because the because the very thing that he hated 
was the very group of people that God wanted him to reach. And that was drunks. God, God called him to reach drunk people. Gave him an anointing for it. And, and, he, and he said this, and he said this uh, uh, in his message, I hated drunk people. I hated them. I, I just couldn't stand them. Now I couldn't figure out why God wants me to reach them. And so now watch this now. So now, so if God's going to assign an anointing on him for that assignment, then that means that he had to change, right? You cannot reach what you hate. Well, let me, let me rephrase that. You will not reach what you hate. And so, in other words, now, so he had to go through, he had to go through a crushing. And the crushing that he had to go through, uh, which, was a, which was being shoved in this position where he loved everybody in order to be able to fulfill the assignment that God had given him. So I wonder what would happen, I wonder what would happen and how long it would actually take you if God, if God gave you the assignment to reach the group that you hate or the kind that you hate. I wonder, I wonder what would happen. I wonder what would happen. <laughs> another interesting, another interesting uh, thing that, you know, years ago when I, I was listening to um, I was listening to Mark Hanby. Mark, Mark Hanby said this, and, and, you know, I went to Delaware to, uh, to see him. Uh, you know, Bishop, Bishop asked all of us to come out, asked all of the sons, to, sons and daughters to come out uh, because his, his father, his spiritual father, was going to be speaking uh, at a church in uh, Delaware. So, you know, we went out, and, um, and one of the things that he shared he shared, he shared this. He said, it is so interesting that we are, that God sent me into this area to minister to all black people. He said, that is very interesting. He said, because my, an my ancestors owned slaves in this same in this same city and state and and he said he said this he said what are the chances that god would save me put a microphone in my hand and have me to break out people of color have me to break them out of bondages in the same city that my ancestors put them in bondage. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Now, now think about this now. So there, there, there was an anointing. There was an anointing for that. But now, now let's think about what he had to go through in order to, in order to wear that anointing in order to get to that place to fulfill that assignment. Because normally, normally, um, normally, if that is in the bloodline, it's normally handed down. But now, there, there is some level of that bloodline has to break it. Are, are you here? And so now watch this now. So what if God, what if God grabbed a hold of you and says, now here's what I want you to do. I'm calling you to this group of people. It could be drunks. It could be drug addicts. It could be, you know, whatever it is that you dislike. You passionately dislike that. And then God says, I'm going to put an anointing on you. Think of the change that has to happen. Now, and remember, change never happens without a cost and a challenge. Change never happens. We, we never change. Because we have to change from the inside, we never change on the inside without paying that price, without paying that price, and without going through that challenge. Does that make sense to you? And so, 
So the thing that you're going through today or have gone through or will go through tomorrow, is it possible that you're going through that to prepare your heart to receive the anointing for that assignment. I, want, I just want you to entertain that for a minute. Now, then what happens? Now, think about this. Let me, let, me, let me give you something else. So then what happens if you refuse to go through that? You're never really prepared for the thing. Watch this. You, you're never really prepared for the thing that God won't change his mind about. I'm going to just let that just marinate just a couple of minutes. God won't change his mind. See, once God has established a thing, he don't change his mind about it. So, so what if? What if? And then God, and then God is positioning you to, to pay the cost, to endure the challenge, so that he can put the anointing on you for that. See, these are things that these are things that prophets have to, have to actually endure, especially prophets. We always have to endure things like that. Because every time God give, gets ready to place a, a different anointing on us, guess what? We have another level of change that has to happen. Because we have to fit the anointing. Th think about this. You remember Moses. So he goes through 40 years in Egypt. Do you realize, um, do you realize from that time, God was actually preparing him for what he was going to have him to do all the way down the road. He was Egypt trained. He knew the mindset of Egyptians. He knew the land of the Egyptians. He was in Egypt 40 years. And then God says, well, we're going to have to bring him out of Egypt. So, you know, God allowed uh, a challenge to take place in Egypt that would, that would flush him out. So now he's going to endure 40 years on the backside of the desert, being trained by God to be something that, that he would have never learned in Egypt. What was that? Shepherding. He would have never, because they thought that that was the lowest thing on the totem pole. Egypt, Egyptians did. They, they, they thought that was the lowest job. And so, so, <laughs> so <laughs> God has him on the backside of the mountain training for 40 years as a shepherd. His heart, his heart was hard in Egypt. God brings him on the backside of the desert and makes his heart soft, pliable, so that he could actually wear the anointing of a shepherd. Does that make sense? so that he could embrace the anointing of a prophet. So, so, that, so he endures these things. Why? So that he could wear the anointing. Does that make sense? So now, um, so now the next, the third 40 of his life is going, to be, is going to be used in what he learned on the backside of the desert. How many of you got that? He has to have an anointing for that. You can't do that without an anointing because you'll end up wanting to, uh, if you don't have an anointing for that, then you're going to end up wanting to kill the folk that you just saved because you, you don't have an anointing for that. Does that make sense? See, that's why we have to, sometimes we have to defer to somebody else's anointing because we don't have an anointing for that. Does that make sense? How many of you, how many of you really understand that? And so, so, you know, sometimes some of us, God has just given us a soft heart. He's given us a soft heart, you know, so that we can, so that we can, so our heart can be nice and moldable and shapeable so that we could, so that we could love people through their stupidity. 
Isn't that awesome? You get to love people that, um, that act like sheep. You get to love them because, you know, um, or not just, not just sheep, but goats. Isn't that interesting? We get to actually use the anointing that we were shaped for. But now, understand this. Not everybody would be able to handle sheep. Because after, after you've said it, and 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 they're still standing out there, and they won't come in. Now you have to go get them and bring them in. Some of you, some of you wouldn't dare. Well, I, I told them to come on in here. If they, if they ain't got enough sense to just come in out the rain, then let their tail stay out there. You don't have a shepherd's heart. Or should I say it this way? You don't have a shepherd's anointing. Because you would, let, you would let God's creation stay out there. And so, so if you don't have that, that, that just, now don't feel bad about that. That just means that you don't have the shepherd's anointing. Why? You didn't pay the price for that. But you did pay the price for something. Does that make sense? And so now understand this. Somebody that has a shepherd's heart, they don't have no problem. They don't have no problem just enduring them or, or tolerating them as long as, they, as long as they need to. And then they'll go get them, and they'll spoon feed them, and they will help them, uh, and they will bring them in. They will go through. They have the mercy for that. They are wearing that kind of an anointing because they've been shaped for that. Are you here? Now, Shepherds don't understand prophets. Pastors, most pastors don't understand prophets because they're, they're, they're too hard. They're, uh, they're, they're, they're too hard. They, you know, they're judgmental. Can we just roll through some of the things that, uh, some, of the, uh, some of the things that pastors would call uh, problematic for prophets? One of those things, one of those things happen to be, they're judgmental. I don't, I don't think that I've ever seen a, a, a prophet, that uh, somebody that was truly a prophet, that was not judgmental. Including the one that's holding the microphone. See, I had to go through something to get that out of me. And, and, it, and it actually, now, let, 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 me, let me rephrase that. Because I'm still a prophet and it's not gone, but I know how to use it. Because it because understand this now if if I'm just if I'm just always judgmental on something, then I will kill what God loves. And so there are times that there are times that there is a different anointing that comes on me, and I and I learn to I learn to love people, just like they are. Does that make sense? And so all of so now, but I cannot explain to you. Uh, the kind of chaos that I had to go through to get that. See, that, that, that's something that you had to pay for. You don't just, you don't just get that. Are you here? That, 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 doesn't come, that doesn't come free. You know, you have, to, you have to go through something to get that. And it's painful. How many of you got that? Hey, Amen. Praise God. So my point is, is that whatever you, whatever you're, you're in, you're dealing with, there is a huge possibility that the only reason that you're going through that is because God is trying to break something in you so that you get to wear the anointing for your assignment. Why don't you share? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> See, they're horrible. They are horrible. Ruth, Naomi, Carla, and Leona. <laughs> <laughs> All four of y'all. 
<laughs> no, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> no. But see, now, under, understand this. See, a pastor's not going to understand that. A pastor's not going to understand that. You know why? Because they, they, they operate with a different anointing. Does it make sense? I mean, they, they operate with a different anointing. You know, they, they, they won't even think about that. You know why? Because they operate with a different anointing. And so, um, which means that they, they would never even think to do something like that. You know why? They don't have the prophet's anointing. Because the prophet, understand this, and this is one of the things that we really have to get. The prophet is designed to kick folk people <laughs> kick them back in line kick them back in shape does it make sense does it make sense to you and see now a, 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 somebody that have a pastor's heart a pastor's anointing would not even think about doing anything like that why because because they have a different anointing and that's why you have five lined up shoulder to shoulder Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. That's, that's why you have that. Now, a teacher, a teacher is actually ab absolutely going to keep repeating themselves. Why? Because teaching is repetition. Got it? Teaching is repetition. But you, you have people like the evangelists that don't want to, they ain't going to keep just repeating myself. They're not going to do it. They have a different anointing. Th does that make sense to you? And see, these are things that we have to absolutely embrace. We have to understand this. And now, every one of those five had a different course and a different challenge that they went through that made them like they are. Does that make sense to you? Now, now, now understand this. Now, it doesn't mean that we as, that we as prophets that we're always just going to be hard on people. Doesn't mean that we're always just going to... <laughs> Oh, we're just going to leave them out there, shut the, shut the blinds, you know, <laughs> pull down the curtains or whatever it is that you say we do, uh, and, 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 and eat popcorn, roof and just pretend they ain't out there. Turn the TV up so you can't hear them. <laughs> so, but now understand this, and this is the thing that we really have to understand, because everybody wouldn't, because all five won't do that, it's because they were shaped by a different test. They were shaped by a different test. One of the things that a priest would go through, according to Hebrews, one of the things that a priest would go through, they would go through challenges that they needed God's forgiveness so that they would know how to, uh, to handle, uh, in a tender way, people that fell, people that fell short. If, if, if you ever get to the point where you, um, where you are hard on people because they because they fell short you could guarantee you can be guaranteed that you're going to have some great failures in your life that that and God's going to God's going to make your heart pliable amen i'm telling you it happened <laughs> if it didn't yet keep on living it it'll, it'll show up i promise you it will i promise you it will you know why? And here's the, here's the reason why it does. It shows up because though prophets, now watch this, though prophets are not mercy driven, they're not driven by mercy, every one of us must have it because our God is merciful. Okay. I'll take that one amen, that one. Mm. Yep. Yes, ma'am. If uh, if okay, I'll talk about it. If I'm that type that leaves people out the door, um, and they're constant, you're constant, you know, they come to you and they say, "This is your repeated behavior as it relates to individual." Is there something in us that causes them to keep coming back to us, sitting them back out on the porch. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because it's like, we can just keep going. I just keep coming back. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And they just keep they just keep coming back. Yep. And, and here's and here's the thing, because there is an anointing that draws them back. Because remember, even though even though a, a prophet may function that way, they're um they're developing something on the inside of these people. But now if but now if 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 we just kept doing that without having some of those other ministry gifts that were part of uh, that were part of our world, um, without bringing them in, so that they could be part of this development, that person would absolutely be ruined. They would be ruined because um, because nobody can handle that forever. Does that make sense? Nobody can handle that forever. You know. Um, you know, I mean, you you can you can discipline a child with a with a with a, a belt, but you you can't. I mean, you know. And I mean, well, you know, they say you're not supposed to do it, but um, people do it. But if you if that was the only method that you had, if that was the only method of discipline that you had, you ruined the child. There should be other methods that are used. There, there should be multiple methods that are used. I mean, I mean, just think about it this way. E- even a roach becomes immune to what you use if you keep using the same thing. Same thing that used to kill them, will start. they'll start enjoying it. And they won't die. Are you with me? And so, you know, and, and same thing with a discipline. You use the same method of discipline, they become immune to it. They become immune to that, that method of discipline, and it'll stop working, but it will, it will still ruin them. Does that make sense? And so that's why they keep coming back, because you have an anointing for them. And so your anointing is helping them, is fixing them. But then it takes the other four anointings uh, in order to make them perfect or whole or complete. It takes the other four anointings. That's the reason, you know, it just can't be just the anointing that we see every Sunday. You know the, the 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 anointing that we see, you know, in the in the set gift that is doing whatever they do, it cannot just be that anointing. That's on them. We have to make room for the other anointings in us. Does that make sense? Now, but we have to make sure that whoever is used, that they are, uh, that they are or have been developed in the area to wear that anointing. Because they're, they're not going to function at the height of that anointing if they have not, if they have not dealt with the cost and the challenge. They're not, going to, they're not going to wear it like a coat. See, we have to be able to wear the anointing like a coat. Does that make sense? Now, what, is that, what does that really mean, wear the anointing like a coat? That means that That means that it is a perfect fit. That means that the anointing that's on your life, it is a perfect fit. Now, you know how to flow with that anointing. You know how to flow with that anointing. And because now remember, between the Holy Spirit and that anointing, uh, there is a flowing that's needed because now you cannot be behind the, the anointing or the Holy Spirit. Let's let's say the Holy Spirit. You can't get behind the Holy Spirit and you can't get in front of him. You have to be able to flow with him. When he goes right, you need to be able to go right. When he goes left, you need to be able to go left. Does that make sense? When he when he shifts, you have to be able to shift. When he says to do this, you have to be ready to do it. You can't be, you can't be getting ready to do it. You have to be able to do it. Why? Because a lot of things that God does, it must be done in perfect timing or you won't get the kind of manifestation. You won't get the kind of manifestation that was, uh, that's, that was really needed. Does that make sense to you? You won't, you won't get it. You, but see, that's something, that, uh, that's something that you absolutely have to make sure that you're, you, you, you have to make sure that you're flowing with that or not. And so, as a result, 
you start getting, you start to see miracle after miracle after miracle. You start to see that people are getting uh, manifestations based on based on the fact that you did what you needed to do when you needed to do it. You flowed with that anointing. Does that make sense? This is something that this is something that we have to actually learn to do. We have to make sure that we are there when it comes down to uh, when it comes down to operating that way. You know, a lot of times uh, people have uh, people here, have, you know, they've uh, said to me uh, after service, you know, I felt like the Lord uh, gave me a word that I needed to, that I needed to share. Um, well, it's too late now. We're all gone. And, you know, I mean, they they gone. They gone, you know. That was the time to actually, you know, they they should have they should have rolled out with that. Does that make sense? See, they, they should have known exactly when God gave them that opening and flowed with that right there. That's the anointing. They should have been able to do that. But now understand this. But because they but, but because they didn't, that could have been a matter of life and death to somebody that was sitting here that may never come back. You know, that could have been the deciding factor on whether or not somebody was going to make the decision for Christ that day. But we didn't, we didn't move. We didn't, we didn't do that. You say, well, well Bishop, I didn't, I, didn't, I, I, didn't, I, didn't know that I, I didn't know that I could. Who asked, you, who asked you to think about that? No, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dropped on you. He gave you that. It was time to, it was time to release that. You know, if you were wrong, I'd have told you. I probably wouldn't have told you, uh, you know, where everybody could hear it because you were doing your best to use your gift. Does that make sense? So I would have cornered you. You know, if you, were, if you were wrong, I'd have cornered you. But I wouldn't have cornered you in front of everybody. I mean, that's just not how you, that's just not how you do it. You know what I mean? Unless, unless you just sent somebody to hell that was in the seat. Now we need to deal with that right now before they leave. Does that make sense? Because I mean, there, I mean, there there are times, you know, people get in their religion, and you know, now you didn't you didn't send somebody to hell, you know, and and they go out here condemned, and that's never that's never the plan of God to send anybody in condemnation. No, no, no. And so, um, but you know, if it was something, if it was something that really it wasn't really a big deal, we're not going we're not going to assassinate anybody. Uh, for for following the Holy Spirit as they thought that they were following him. They released something that probably encouraged, encouraged somebody. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we correct that. We correct, we correct it, but we correct that behind the scene. Th does that make sense? But now you can't, you can't, uh, I, I remember uh, one person that, um, um, I remember one person that that said, uh, and I was I was sitting in somebody else's uh, prophetic meeting, and uh, no, oh no, yeah, I was sitting in somebody's prophetic meeting, and they were, you know, I was I was asked to come and you know just check it out and see, you know, give me some feedback on on how the meeting went, on what you thought about the meeting. And, um, and so, I, you know, and one of the things that the young lady talked about was uh, she said that, you know, they had gone, they had gone somewhere. Um, uh, she, her pastor, and a few others had gone to, had gone somewhere. And she said that she was sitting there and God gave her, God gave her a word that the, that the praise and worship leader uh, had an ought in her heart against the pastor, and that she needed to fix that, and <laughs> and said that um, you know said that uh, she had um, she didn't say anything because she didn't she didn't you know she didn't want to miss God she didn't want to miss God and so she you know she didn't she didn't say anything about it and she you know they ended up. Back in, uh, I think no, this was they before they had left the church. Before they had left the church, um, 
because he was the guest speaker, and um, said that um, <laughs> she ended up sharing it with the pastor's wife. And the pastor's wife was in the meeting. The pastor's wife was in the meeting with the past with the with the uh, uh, the resident pastor that was there, and the the visiting pastor. You got that, and so, and and the wife, the 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 pastor's wife went over and shared that with uh, shared no, told her to share. Well, she just told her told her to share that with uh with the with the guest pastor because they all had come uh, from this area and uh, said that uh, he said to he said to her um. You say the Lord said that. So, girl, why, why in the world you didn't you, you didn't you didn't share that? Well, I didn't. Well, I didn't. I, I, anybody tell you to think? You, 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 God gave you a word, and you're supposed to share that. I mean, he he went up one side of that girl and down the other, and and they and they ended up. It just so happens that the that the pastor was uh, the resident pastor there was still in the building. The uh, praise and worship leader was still in the building, so they just called them together. She shared, she shared that, and man, that girl broke. That girl, the praise and worship leader, just absolutely broke. Well, see, that's what was supposed to happen, and that relationship between the pastor and the praise and worship leader got fixed before they left. And it was no way in the world that this girl could have known about what was going on with them because she wasn't privy to any of the meetings. Does that make sense to you? And so now, now understand this. But what if they had? What if they had left? What if they had left that city, and they came? They came on back here, flown all the way back here, and and she had come back with that word. That church could have absolutely been wrecked because you have somebody that's out in front of everybody that have an odd in their heart against the uh, against the pastor, and they could have just she could have just absolutely wrecked the church, and as a result, wrecked herself. Because one person that had a word held it. You see how important that is. Yeah, see, see, we have to, we have to create a, we have to create a, um, we have to, we have to go through the cost and go through the challenge and start wearing that anointing like a coat to the point where we just absolutely, totally surrender ourselves to the Holy Spirit, totally surrender ourselves to that anointing and just flow in it. Now, here's the, here's the next thing. The, the more you flow in that anointing, the more that anointing grows in you. I'll say that one more time. The more you flow in that anointing, the more that anointing grows. And you, now, now, but now here's the thing. The anointing grows and you grow with that anointing. And so the, both of you are actually growing together. And, and, the, and the more you grow together, the tighter that anointing grips around you. And before you know it, you can't tell you from that anointing. Why? Because you because you you have you have developed, you have paid the price, you have uh, you have endured the challenge, all the challenge that came along with that. You started enduring that. You started going through that. And so, as soon as the anointing the anointing is is shifting to do something else, you're right with that anointing. Does that make sense to you? And, and understand this, and this is the exact way that we as prophets are supposed to are supposed to move. We as prophets are supposed to move this way. Now, then this is something that we absolutely have to we absolutely have to address this. We have to understand that this will work anywhere. This, this, is, not, this is not limited to church or church walls. It's not limited to here. This this will work. This will work at your job. This will work. This will work at the airport. This this will work in the bathroom. See, I mean, gotta gotta have you anywhere. 
And, and, he'll, and he'll activate that anointing, and, and you'll just absolutely know, I need to minister to that person right there. You know, you know, uh, you know, and I'm telling you, and this is this. These are some of the things that I used to I used to do. Man, I was in I was in uh, McDonald's one time, and I, you know, and um, this was, this was years ago, um, before I start before I start pastoring, long before I start pastoring, um, you know, and the Spirit of God, Spirit of God spoke to me about somebody that was, you know, there was there was this young lady. She was in uh, she was in McDonald's. God gave me a prophetic word for her when I was calling myself an evangelist. Uh, God had given me a prophetic word for her, and I shared, I shared that word. Very few, very, very few times was I off. Because I was, I, was, I, was, uh, I was going through my test, I was going through my challenge, and uh, I was paying the price for that anointing, <clears throat> but I was moving in that anointing, and let me tell you something. And I start wearing it like a coat. I start wearing that anointing like a coat. Why? Because I was always using it. I was always using it. Well, that's what God wanted me to do. He wanted me to use it. And he didn't want it to be limited to the church walls. Does that make sense? See, the anointing that God puts on you, he don't want that anointing limited to the church walls. Because there, there are far more people outside of the church walls that need to be helped than, are, than that are within the church walls. I mean, because think about this. Think about you guys are coming here and you're getting the word. You're getting trained up in faith. You're getting trained up in, in spiritual laws. You're getting trained up in all of these areas. You know how to get, you know how to get the results without a word. Does that make sense? Because you had the word. And so you know, how to, you know how to absolutely use, you, you're taught, you're trained to, to use the word to get what it ever, whatever it is that, um, that God wants you to have. And then, and then secondly, you're taught in prayer. You know how to get in the face of God, and you know how to hear from God for yourself because of all the training that we're provided. But then you ask somebody out there, they didn't get that at their church. I told you guys about the about the um, you know the event that I I visited because somebody asked me if I'd come, and I and I I went just because you know uh, I loved them and they wanted me to come so I didn't want to go, I did I just simply didn't want to go, and when I went there I saw some people that used to be with us, and it broke my heart not because they were not because they left us and they and they joined over there. Not because of that. It was because what I saw, I saw, I saw people that had been set so far behind. Because the word, though the word was taught, or though the subject was taught incorrectly, I'll say that one more time. Though the subject was taught incorrectly, it was something that we, we taught that 15 years ago. You know, so you mean to tell me that they hung under that kind of a word for 15, 15 years ago, and one person had an assignment that they were doing when I walked in when I walked in the church, looked to the left, they sat behind the, they sat behind the board, and I thought, oh God, you mean, you mean that they 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 sat back 17 years. Can you imagine what that what that feels like for for a man of God to know the kind of word that he put in them, know the kind of training that he put them through, and then to see every one of them set back fifteen to seventeen years? To hear, to go in there and to hear all of this, all of this prophecy that's going on, and and it is far from a word from God. One of the one of the words that I you know I've observed it because you know I I you know uh, when the uh, the direction was how many of your prophets in here how many prophets we have and you know and 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 you had people that raised their hand well all of you prophets I want you to, I want you to come up because uh, I, we want you to help us at the altar and now all of these people that said raise their hand they said they were prophets. We have no confirmation on who they are. 
No confirmation on who they are. No, no, we don't know most of them. See, they didn't know most of them. They didn't know who they were, but they said they were a prophet. And so now they get to come up and they get to, they get to prophesy to everybody that was in the seat. So everybody that's in the seat, you come up and just grab whoever you want, and they're going to prophesy to you. And there's nobody that is hearing that. So, you know, so uh, the few people that, that, that are presently members here, well, I wanted to get in on this. I want to see, I want to see what they're saying. And, so, and that's just what I do, you know, because, I'm, because here's, the, here's the first mistake. Anytime somebody is releasing a prophetic word, that word should be, there should be somebody else there that's qualified to judge it. And that they, none of them, none of those words were judged. And so, you know, I, I stepped up on, uh, you know, stepped up on, uh, you know, word uh, somebody was giving Brother Colin and said, oh, you're a pastor. You're a pastor. Praise God. I hear the Lord saying, you're a pastor. And, you know, and, you know, he was nice. He was nice. And, you know, he just, you know, he, he just smiled and thanked the person and, you know, went on back to, it, went on back to his seat. Uh, somebody else asked him, did that confirm something for you? He said, not even close. Not even close. I'm far from a pastor. That ain't even what I'm supposed to do. You know, and so, but, they, but that was somebody raised their hand and said, I'm, I'm a prophet. And so they released that. And so another person that they, the same person, they released a word, they released a word to, I, I hear the Lord saying, just be encouraged. Just be encouraged. There ain't no prophecy. That ain't no prophecy. What you mean just be encouraged? I hear the Lord saying, be encouraged, be encouraged, be encouraged, be encouraged. Oh, that's all I hear the Lord saying, just be encouraged. That ain't no prophecy. There ain't no prophecy. You could have walked up on anybody and said that. That, ain't, that, is, that is far from prophetic. You know, I mean, you wanted to tell them you ain't had nothing else because you ain't, you ain't, you ain't hear God. You didn't hear what God said. You, God probably ain't say nothing to you. And so you had to come up with something because they done thrown you up here. How many of you understand that? And so now the other <laughs> I hadn't gotten to the other person yet to find out what they were, what they was, what was spoken to them, uh, but now, but here's the thing I want you, I want you to understand. When something like that happens, there has to be somebody that's qualified to judge that word. There has to be somebody there that's qualified to judge that word. And so now here's the, but here's the under, here's the thing that I just absolutely understand. None of them had walked with that anointing until they wore it like a coat where, where they were flowing with that anointing and that anointing was working with them. Nobody. None of them. Now, there, there, was, this, there was this one young lady that was doing, a, that was doing most of the prophecy, uh, the prophecy in, that, uh, in that service. Now, now, from what I heard from her, she was on and she was off. She was hitting and she was missing. But she was, she was hitting more than anybody. I could tell you that. She was hitting more than anybody. But uh, she was on and she was off. That's just, that's just how that word was. You know, but it wasn't any of my business. I'm just a visitor there. They ain't asked me a thing. You know, and as a matter of fact, I didn't want to be there anyway, so... Wasn't, I probably wasn't going to be a whole bunch of help. I didn't want. I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to be there. I'm just. I'm just here to encourage them, just because you know they part of this thing. I'm just. I'm just here because I out of love because I'm encouraging them. It wasn't my function. It wasn't something that I was supposed to be involved with, in. and I had no leading from God at all. I had no leading from God at all. Now, and so therefore, I'm only a visitor. So when they asked me if I would if I would come up and be part of that that was going on, I told them no. No, I'm just here to observe. That's all I want to do. That's all I want to do right now. I just want to observe. I didn't want to be part of that. 
Because the second that they pulled that thing together, I saw all, I saw all the broken pieces right there. I said, this, this, this right here is about to be a mess. I, I'm telling you, I knew it. This right here is about to be a mess because, first of all, it had no order of God in it. And that's the, that's the absolute first thing. Anytime you throw a whole line of people up just because they said they are, it's about to be a mess. It's about to be a mess. The, the people that are up there need to be people that you train. They needed to have gone through some extensive training before you turn them loose on people. Because here's one of the things that you and I need to know about the people that stand up there. Because the authority of the house said you could do this, they have a dimension of confidence in that person that's standing in front of them. And understand this. Now, if they get a hold of somebody that was gullible and just, just believe just anything that, that came across, let me tell you something. They would have screwed a lot of people up. And some of them may have been gullible. I've heard at least one person since then that was actually, that was actually in that, uh, that was actually in that service and and I'm just trying to work with them now, trying to help them now, um, you know, to, uh, to just slow down, just slow down and create a level of focus. See, now what, what is that going to do? That level of focus is going to help them to, to, one, not be all over the place, two, understand each individual that are designed to speak into their life. And so now watch this, because now once you have that, there's an anointing. Remember, you're already, you're already paying a price for this, and you're already enduring a challenge. And all of this is so that you will, so that you will wear that anointing like a coat. But when you have too many people that's involved in this, this whole thing, and you you listening to all of these different people all over the place, you that is going to be a loose fitting suit. That suit is going to be too big for you because you have too many people pulling on it, and uh, and it is a recipe for confusion. And that is one thing that a budding prophet don't need. A budding prophet never needs to be confused. Does that make sense to you? Now. Let me get this closed. Um, well, we never left the first page, so you can close your book, I guess. But most of what I said to you is in the book, in this chapter, I'm sorry. Um, here's the thing that I really want to challenge you guys on, though. I want to, cha I want to challenge you on identifying, and I want, you to, I want you to take very special notes, and I want this to be, I want you to take this home as an assignment. Identify specifics on what God wants you to do. If you don't, if you don't do anything else but just seek God about this season of your life, if, if, you, if you just do that, just seek God about this season of your life, and ask God, what is it that you will have me to do in this season? That's cutting it close, but that's very specific. It's this season. Why? Because, because obviously you have already endured some things. You've already paid a price, and there is an anointing on you right now for this season. Does that make sense? There is something, there is an anointing that's on you for this season that is designed to be God's supernatural ability on you to do something in this season right here. So now, so as a practice, you're identifying exactly what that is. God, what is it that you're having me to do in this season? What is that thing that you're having me to do? Um, when God starts to minister that thing to you that you're to do in this season, I want you to jot them down. I want you to jot them down. Because the next thing that you're going to do, the second thing that you're going to do is you're going to identify uh, the depth of that particular assignment or that calling, if God speaks to you about a calling. You're going to identify the calling, the depths of that calling. 
Because now what you're going to do, you're going to, uh, you're going to measure, you're going to measure that thing against the challenge. And now here's, and now here's, here's, a, here's a really a, man, this is huge, that I want you to, that I want you to now do. Once you have those two pieces, I want you to do this. I want you to see if you could find someone in the word, a character in the word, that would, um, that's very similar, that, that God had given uh, a very similar assignment. And then I want you to look at what their challenge was. I want you to look at what their challenge was. Now, this will require some thinking, though. For instance, if let's say, for instance, that person, you know, um, the Apostle Paul, who was Saul at that time, Acts chapter 9, he was Saul, and um, Spirit of God knocks him off, knocks him off the donkey, and uh, and he lo- he he is now basically smitten with scales on his eyes, and um, and he says, uh, "Who are you, Lord? I'm Jesus of Nazareth, who you persecute. What would you have me to do? Go in the city and see a man. So now he's he's got to go in there. He's got to look for Ananias." Or he's got to be led in there because until he meets Ananias, scales don't fall off. I'll say that one more time. Until he meets Ananias, the scales that's covering his eyes don't fall off. And so now I want you to think, though, about what he did in his past that now caused people to see him a a specific way. What kind of a test did he have to endure in order to, in order to really step into that anointing? What kind of test did he have to endure? What do you think? What, what do you think the test was? I mean, there, there are multiple, I can tell you this, there are multiple components of his test that he had to endure. And it was based on the depths of the call because that's one of the things that the Lord addressed. He, he addressed uh, to Ananias, not to, not to him. He addresses this to Ananias and, and says, I have called him, and he's praying now, and gave Ananias information about his call. Does that make sense? Now, now, he, now he did, he, he ministered that to Paul, uh, but he gave it to Ananias. So Ananias knows exactly what he's called to do, but now, but now watch this now. And so he has this call on his life. He has this call on his life, and, um, and he has to go in and see Ananias. Now watch this. Going in to see Ananias, Ananias really don't want to talk to this guy. Why? Because he killed so many people. None of the other disciples or apostles want to talk to him because he's killed so many people. And so there was a whole, can you imagine what he had to go through in order to, in order to answer the call of God that's upon his life? He had to go through some things. Why? Because he had a, he had a bad history. But, but think about this. He wrote more books out of the New Testament, of the New Testament, than anybody else because of the depth of his call. So then, uh, so then the challenge has to be there. Now, let me, give you, let me give you a hint of where to look to, so that you can get a real feel for his, for his, uh, for his cause. Uh, let's see. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 tells the story on that. You remember that? Night and the day, he was in the deep uh, among perils of robbers and all that. You remember that? Okay, I want, you to, I want you to take a look at that. Read that, whole, read that whole thing. So now watch this. So now you're actually seeing the depths of his, of his challenge, you're, or you're seeing a, a certain part of his challenge. You're seeing a certain part of his challenge, and, and it's all because of the depths of his call and his assignment. And so when you, you begin to look at what you are, what you are uh, summons to do, when you look at that, 
and you identify and you identify uh, what that call or that assignment is. You identify that, and then you start to identify the depth of that assignment. Now let's take it to the next place. See if we can find somebody in the Word that had a similar call or a similar assignment, and look at what they had to endure. Does that make sense? Now, it may mean that you have to do a study on that particular character. It may mean that you have to do that. Um, but, the, but now, understand this. But what's going to literally happen is that God's going to unfold to you how an individual would be challenged with a given thing so that they can be developed into that call or that assignment or get the gain, the anointing for that. Does that make sense to you? I'm telling you, it's going to make a lot of sense to you after you really do the assignment. Oh, yes, ma'am. Got it? Awesome. Wow, any questions? Any questions? Praise God, praise God. Come on, let's, uh, oh, any, if any of you online, you, you have any questions, just go ahead and type it in there, and we'll go ahead and address that. Amen. Amen. I really, I really pray that, um, Praise God. I really pray that that you guys actually you guys actually go through the assignment. It's it, it will absolutely be huge in your life. It will absolutely be huge. And you go through that, I can promise you that it it's going to it's going to it's going to be unfolded to you. You'll see it so clear how God will use that, he'll take that, and he'll begin to develop you. Now, at the end of the day, this is what this is what it actually happened. You'll understand your test. That's one of the, I think that's one of the huge things that we oftentimes we just don't do. We don't understand the test. And so therefore, we look for ways to get out of the test.